The new horror play Grey House is sending chills down spines at Broadway's Lyceum Theater. It's got jump scares, it's got thrills, and it's got an incredible cast. Paul's here now with a story. That's right, Tamsin. Known by fans for the Quiet Place films, Millicent Simmons is making what she calls a mind-blowing Broadway debut in Grey House. We sat down at the Star Child rooftop at the Civilian. Millicent, so nice to meet you. How is New York and Broadway treating you? Oh my God, I love New York. It's my favorite city in, uh, in the world. I would never say no to, to coming to New York or living here and being on Broadway has been overwhelming. I didn't know what to expect, but I'm loving every moment. It's such a strong community, this theater community, and I feel so welcome. Everyone's so warm and welcoming. It's been a wonderful experience. But you're not necessarily in a warm play. This is kind of like a play. <laughs> no, it's quite the opposite of a warm play. I have to think about this. I, it's not exactly a horror play. It's a psychological thr thriller. It's very nuanced. The audiences are trying to figure out what's happening throughout the th storyline. I think often audiences leave with more questions and answers, and I like that kind of play, that kind of narrative. That's why I said yes to this. What about this cast? I mean, you, you're, you're a fantastic rising star, and I've been watching you for a few years, so it's exciting to see your name on the marquee, but there's a lot of other great names on the marquee as well. Oh my God. I mean, to work with Lori Metcalf, it's amazing. She's so beautiful. And on day one, during rehearsals, she came ready. She had already memorized her lines, and we were like all trying to catch up with her. She set the bar right away. And she, you know, she made us kind of look bad on day one, but she's so amazing. She never comes out of char character. Tatiana and Paul and their relationship together in the story is really moving. It's been very inspiring for me. All of the other talent too, the young talent, they're very funny. They're a great ensemble. Tell me about your childhood. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Utah, near Salt Lake City, north of Salt Lake City. I was in a deaf program in a mainstream school and partly in a deaf school, and that's where I got hooked on drama. I did all their Shakespeare plays, and uh, my Midsummer Night Dream was my first play. I did Puck. That role was my first role, and it made me really interested in theater, in the stage, and performing. I loved that experience. Puck is a great role. So tell me about your Puck. What was it like as your first role digging into that? Puck is a lot of personality. I think I was kind of already akin to Puck. I think I'm a little impish. I love to play tricks on people. So I felt like I was really ready for this role. Um, I felt like I was already Puck. So it was easy for me to inhabit that character. It was the first time I had an audience and it was the first time I really owned the room, had people looking at me. I felt confident. I knew what I was doing. That feeling was I mean, it's indescribable. I just, it felt powerful. Were you exposed to any deaf performers who had found careers, you know, on stage or on screen? Were you exposed to them and their work? Not really. There wasn't, I didn't see a lot of representation. My first exposure from a deaf actor was um, Niall on American's Next Top Model. And I watched all of his videotapes, his YouTubes, um, whatever he was in. But I didn't think I would be able to succeed in the industry in Hollywood. I never dreamt I'd be here. I'm very fortunate to be able to be where I am today. And it's not only me. You're seeing so much more deaf representation on stage, uh, on stage, in film, in big fi on the big screen, in television. It's, it's just, I feel so fortunate to see this time in history, uh, this change, this social change, where people, where things are more accessible, where we're seeing more diverse representation. There's something beautifully theatrical about American Sign Language, too. We've, we've seen on Broadway. It's, that's a really uh, beautiful layer to performing. I totally agree. American Sign Language is already expressive as a language, and it's expressed through your body. With your voice, you know, you can, it, you have intonation and inflection, but you may not see it in the body. In deaf culture, you know, ASL is very visible. All that inflection and nuance is visible through your face, through your body. And I think sometimes it reads as more authentic. I think it's a, a perfect language for the stage because it, it 
can reveal itself, reveal characters in different ways. I think audiences aren't used to seeing it, but it's very cool. It's a very visual language. What's it been like becoming a movie star? I mean, you were just a girl from Utah who sort of blew up in a big way pretty quickly. Mind blowing. <laughs> what can I say? Mind blowing, but I love it. Every moment is just I, it, I'm grateful for. I get to meet so many people, so many amazing people. We've traveled over the world m with my family and to see myself represented on screen, to see sign language on the screen and also in a horror genre, all the things I love. What, what are the struggles? Like what, what do you want people to know about your life and about forging a career that maybe they don't think about? I think in the industry, the obstacle we face the most is that people don't have patience. They're not willing to take the time to understand. They're inflexible, kind of rigid. I think if they see someone different, they want to avoid difference, actually. And it's something that, that you know, I can understand that fear, but we can't, we can't live in that fear. It's not just the not just hearing people who are now writing the narratives. Deaf people are now learning to be more confident in our community and realizing that we can succeed in the industry. And I think it, we're finally taking this next big step from our community and I'm very proud to be a part of it. And I'm very proud to see our community move forward. What's it like for you? Do you like to see big Broadway musicals? Do you have, um, do, do you get pleasure out of that? Obviously, a big element of a Broadway musical isn't there for you, but is that something you enjoy as a audience member? Oh, definitely, I enjoy it. My first Broadway performance was Wicked, so there we go. And to see the story, the acting, the music, I mean, I have a cochlear implant, I can hear it. Not perfectly, no, but it's good enough for me to understand the beauty and the power of the music. It made me have chills and crying. I mean, when we left, I was like sobbing. I was with my mom. I just loved that experience so much. And I still, I'm still new. I mean, I'm sort of a novice, a baby I'm broad, in the Broadway industry, but I'm learning so much. I'm starting to see so much theater and I'm loving every moment of it. So I've, I've been meaning to learn American Sign Language. Of course. And it's challenging and, and taking the time to learn it, it, it's very daunting. Since you're here, I'm wondering, maybe you can teach me something? I thought maybe we could teach me and everybody something simple like happy opening night. And it moves up, yeah. That's happy. That's happy, and you did it perfectly. And what do I do with my face? Doesn't matter. Yes, yeah, no. <laughs> Very happy. It's like a box, opening a oh. box. Think of it as opening a box. So much of it is literal. Opening. Okay, opening. Happy, opening. Night. Night. Ready? We're going to put it all <laughs> together. Know. What's happy? Do you remember happy? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank that you. was perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.